In this video, I want to go through a bunch of VR game design specific things, from hand interactions to weapon handling, inventory management to melee, and try to highlight the different ways developers have implemented these systems into the games to give good examples of how it should and shouldn't be done. Let's start with the hand interactions, how you pick up, grab, hold and manipulate objects in the virtual world. In the early days of VR, we would see the most basic of hand interactions, where you grab something and your hands will clip through it and you end up just awkwardly grabbing thin air. Other developers got rid of the hands completely, so when you grab something, your hand disappears and the object is floating where your hand was. This is an easier way to avoid having to spend lots of time making hand poses for every object in the game and it avoids things looking a little janky, but at the cost of immersion. Most VR games now use hand poses, so when you pick something up, it has a predetermined position where your hand will hold that object but that can also be difficult to look good, with some games like Medal of Honor have the object just snapped to your hand. What you really want is a way to handle grabbing things close up, so physically moving your hand near the item and picking it up, but also a way to grab things from a distance. Because if you've got a game where you're having to pick up lots of stuff, having to move over and even bend down to pick everything up in real life can become very tedious. The best example of this would be Half-Life Alex. When grabbing something close up, the object will quickly move to the hand. It's important to always move the object to the hand and don't move the hand to the object. It's got a smallest range because if you make it too big and you've got a few objects that are close together, you don't want to accidentally grab the wrong thing. They've got multiple hand poses for each object, so with this can, I can grab it from the top or the side. They've also got contextual hand movement, where if your hand moves close to something, it will automatically adjust the hand pose to how you'll pick it up. This really helps smooth out that transition from open hand to hold in something. Going back to Medal of Honor, now we can see how it looks when you just have the object basically teleport to the hand. It's pretty jarring. A game that almost got it right was Wanderer. They've got hand poses for all the objects, although they don't have multiple hand poses depending on where you pick it up, but this is to be expected from a smaller studio. When you grab something, the object moves to your hand rather than just teleporting to it like in Medal of Honor. You can also grab things from a distance, so your hand doesn't have to be real close to the object. It will actually fly through the air and rotate so that it lands in your hand in the correct position. The two main issues I've got with this are the fact that you can grab fixed things from a distance. So like with this cupboard, you can grab the handle and open it from the other side of the room. My hand will warp to the handle, leaving my body. If an object can't be moved, then you shouldn't be able to grab it from a distance. So door handles or these drawers should only work if your hand is very close to them. I also really don't like that harsh yellow outline on the objects to tell you which item you're going to pick up. You can turn it off, but then with so many different things to pick up, you end up grabbing the wrong thing. Going back to Half-Life Alex again, they have my favourite system for grabbing things from a distance. They use gravity gloves, which are even built into the story, which let you aim at the thing that you want and some flaps pop up on your hand. The item has a flash, then a more subtle highlight across the entire object, so that you know what you're about to pick up. You then hold the trigger to lock on, you can see a line coming from the item, then with a flick of the hand and let go of the trigger, it flies through the air and then you catch it with your hand. Even after over 50 hours in this game, I still love using the gravity gloves because it feels so satisfying. Because of how it works, it's very rare that you end up grabbing the wrong thing. Grabbing things from a distance is now pretty standard in most VR games. And lots of developers have different systems for it. I don't like the highlights on Wanderer, like I mentioned, because of how harsh it looks against the more realistic looking environment. I do like the Boneworks and the Bone Lab system, where you've got a simple white dot to let you know which item you've got in your sights. Then you have to press the trigger, similar to Half-Life Alex, but you don't have to flick your hand, you just simply press the grip and it warps through the air into your hand. It feels nice and having to press the trigger helps you stop grabbing a random shoe in the middle of a fist fight. Blade and Sorcery uses a small symbol to mark which object you're aiming at. Your pressing grip brings it up into the air, then you press the trigger to bring it to your hand or you can use the trackpad on the index controllers to move it forwards. Let's talk about weapon handling. I did make a separate video just about guns in virtual reality, so I won't go into too much depth, but when it comes to using guns, you've got three parts. Grabbing the weapon, shooting the weapon, and reloading it. My favorite holster system is in Bone Lab, where you've got five holster points around your body, two under each arms, around the bottom of your back, and then two large slots over the shoulder. Just like with grabbing stuff from a distance, you need to press trigger first. This is to stop you accidentally grabbing a gun when you just want to pick something up. Half-Life Alex uses a weapon wheel type system 
where you press and hold a button and simply move your hand left, right, up or down to select what you want. The guns are glued to your hands so you can't drop them. To get rid of it, you simply press the weapon select button and let go without moving your hand. It works perfectly and it's designed to make sure that you can consistently change weapons with no jank and you can even do it without looking at the weapon wheel. It's a good solution but I personally prefer the physicality of having to move my hands to different points on my body to get the gun I want or to put it away. Once you have the gun in your hand, then you pull the trigger to shoot and a number of factors can really change how the gun feels to use. You've got the amount of kickback the gun has. This is how much the gun moves after every shot, whether it's muzzle jump so the front of the gun rises and then settles back to the original position, or some developers just have the gun move backwards, forcing your hand to jolt backwards slightly with each shot. Sometimes, this can affect the accuracy of the gun, so as a gun jumps up, if you fire quickly, the bullets aim higher each shot. And sometimes, the bullets still aim where you're originally shooting, no matter how fast you shoot. Some games make it so the guns are more accurate and jump less with two hands. There isn't really a right or wrong way to do it, because it really depends on the game that you're trying to make. And it also depends on how you want the shooting to feel, but I think some movement is good because it makes the guns feel more powerful. The amount of shots it takes to kill enemies also massively affects how powerful a gun can feel. Like with Half-Life Alex on the default difficulty, the enemies are really spongy and they take a lot of shots, which I'm not a fan of. There's also a mod called Gunman Contracts for Half-Life Alex, which has got different enemies that only take a couple of shots to kill, and it completely changes the way the pistol feels. Now it feels powerful, and you end up playing completely differently because you're going room to room, taking out multiple enemies quickly, rather than being in a gunfight with one or two for longer. The gun sounds are also really important. Having something sound powerful can really help make a gun feel satisfying to use. Using the Half-Life 2 VR mod as an example, the gun sound of the pistol is really good and it sounds much nicer than the weak sounding pistol in Half-Life Alex. The gun also has more kick and it feels nicer to shoot. Once you've emptied the gun, then you need to reload it, and this is probably the trickiest part to feel good. I know I sound like a broken record, but I really like Half-Life Alex's method. You eject the magazine, bring the new one underneath, and as your hand gets close, it plays a quickie snap animation to finish it off, and it automatically lets go of the mag. Because you're moving your hand with the animation, it feels fluid, and it never feels like the game's taking control of your hands. A game that gets this wrong is Walking Dead Onslaught, which animates a little hand flick when you eject a magazine. You shouldn't make the hands do things that the players aren't, so moving the hands and playing an animation feels odd. They also have the hand move up to load a magazine like in Half-Life Alex, but the range of where it activates is too far away. You can bring your hand near the side of the gun and it will move your hand over and under the gun. You should only activate when the magazine is coming up from under the gun and when it's close to putting the mag into the bottom. The reason you want the magazine to finish going into the pistol like this is because otherwise you end up banging your controllers together trying to load the magazine manually all the way in. Some developers have the magazine suck into the gun out of your hand, rather than move the hand to the gun. It works fine, but it doesn't feel as good as having the hand finish the reload. After the fall has it where you actually have to manually insert the magazine into the gun. When they first launched the game, I would have to awkwardly twist my hand as I moved up to avoid my controllers banging together, but they've actually tweaked this now so it's less of an issue. They do have the magazine snap into the bottom of the gun though, which doesn't look great, and then you have to push it the rest of the way. They also changed the hand position, so the hand switches to pushing it with the palm of the hand. I think how the hand is holding the magazine can make a big difference as well. Like with Pavlov, they've got the hand wrapped around the magazine, whereas in Half-Life Alex, you're cupping it. This works better because your controllers are positioned away from each other, and it feels more fluid. You don't need to change the hand pose like they do with After the Fall. Racking a slide is mostly figured out. Half-Life Alex does it with that nice contextual hand pose to smooth out the transition, and they also have it so you can grab from the back, but also the front of the slide, whereas most games just have the hand position at the back, and your hand will snap to the gun. Some games, like Onwards, still don't have proper hand poses for your guns, so your hands aren't actually connecting with the gun, they're just grabbing thin air. Two hand in a pistol can be tricky sometimes, because you've got to bring your hands together, and again, you can end up banging your controllers together. I prefer a proximity system, so if you bring your hand close, it automatically connects the hands together, so that way you don't have to press and hold the grip button. This only really works for pistols, or for one-handed guns though. It should never be used for two-handed weapons, like in Walking Dead Onslaught, otherwise your hands end up sticking to the gun when you want to let go. 
Half-Life Alex also has some custom-made VR guns like the shotgun and SMG. These are one-handed because Valve didn't like the feeling of two-handed weapons where your hand is floating in mid-air. Custom-built guns for VR rather than using real-life guns is something I've talked about before, but I'd love to see more of it. With Half-Life Alex, the shotgun pops up and you bring the shells down from the top into the barrel. You hold two shells at a time which speeds up the reload. Having to reload a shotgun one shell at a time can be tedious and from the outside it looks like you're playing a different kind of game. You can then either flick the shotgun closed or use your hand to close it and then pull back the lever at the front. I think with more traditional pump action shotguns making it so that you can only pump it when the chamber is empty is the way to go like with After the Fall. Otherwise it's too easy to pump it by mistake or have the pump pull back stopping it from firing. Half-Life Alex also has a custom SMG which uses energy cells. They auto eject when empty then you bring a new one in from the side and the hand automatically lets go. Defector also has something similar and I find loading the cell in the side like this feels really good. You can get a nice fluid movement with little friction. If you're using more traditional two-handed weapons where you bring in a magazine up from underneath, I don't think that having an animation is needed. After the fall does the same thing as the pistols where you bring your hand near the bottom and it snaps into the gun. I just don't like how it snaps and again the hand position changes. It also lets go of the magazine when finished and I think I actually prefer to manual let go for this type of reload, like in Contractors. The magazine doesn't snap into place and I can keep hold on the magazine after. It just feels more solid, like I'm in full control and it's got a satisfying mechanical feel to slotting in a new magazine. Ammo placement can also make a difference. Half-Life Alex has it over the shoulder. This is the best place to have it so you can consistently grab ammo no matter what position your body is, whether you're crouched or you're looking in a different direction to your real life body. I also like after the falls position, it's central to your body and it's higher up towards your chest. You're much less likely to have issues grabbing ammo and it feels satisfying bringing your hand towards your chest. Another thing to mention here is healing. When you get shot and need health, we've got a few different ways to heal up. Like with half Half-Life Alex, it uses a syringe that you can very quickly press a button to pop out the needle and stick it anywhere on your body. They actually made the syringe the same length as the index controllers so you can literally bring the controller to your chest in real life and you can feel it touch your real life body as you heal up. Some games have you eat food by bringing it to your mouth or drink something by holding it up and tilting your head back. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners has a really nice bandage mechanic where you've got to wrap bandages around your arms which works really well with the zombie type gameplay. You've got those tense moments where you need to heal up and you've got zombies coming for you and you need to get it done before they get to you. When in combat I find the syringe style works really well, just because of how instant it is. Let's talk about melee for a second. Just like with the guns, I did make a separate video just on this topic, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but melee feels like one of those things that's still being figured out, and it's got so many different ways to do it. I don't really think there's a right or wrong way to do it. You can go full physics, like with blade and sorcery, but this will always end up with some jank. You've got games like Asgard's Wrath, which went with a more one-to-one -one with no collisions approach where you have to block and parry enemies to remove their armour before you can attack. Until You Fall is a very focused melee roguelike game with a unique system where you get indicators to show where to place your sword to block and then where to slash for attacks. It feels really good. I just want to see this used in a more story-driven adventure VR game that isn't just combat over and over. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is a zombie game which uses physics really well with a big focus on weighty melee combat. You've really got to deliberately remove your hands to compensate for that heavy weight, swinging down an axe which can penetrate the skull of a zombie and it can even get stuck, forcing you to have to yank it out. These methods are all different and I wouldn't say any of them should be the way that all VR games should be in the future because it depends what sort of game the developers want to make. It's like non-VR games. Most non-VR shooters have very similar gameplay but melee focus games are much more diverse with some being fast paced and flashy with over the top moves and animations and some are more slow and mechanical with things feeling more grounded and realistic. Inventory management is also important for some games. If you need to collect to manage stuff, how you store and access it can help make a game feel fun or a chore if it's done poorly. I love the backpack system in Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. You store things by dropping things over your shoulder, then when you want to get it out you grab over your shoulder and bring the backpack in front of you which stays where you put it. Then when you're done, you put it back over your shoulder. Wanderer has an inventory slot you access through your watch, 
So you press your watch with your other hand, and then you select the thing you want, and then grab it. It can be a little finicky at times, and I would have preferred it if you just hovered your hand over the thing that you want, and then it popped up and you grab it rather than having to press a little eject button before you can grab it. Overall, VR development is hard, and it's still a new medium that developers are trying to figure out. I do wish that the bigger developers especially would look outside the bubble more and see how things are already being done. Because it's the bigger studios that seem to just do things their own way and they end up making a bit of a mess of it. Like the recent VR port of Hitman 3, which is really poor without any room scale support, you've got hands that don't line up with your controllers, and some of the worst two-handed guns I've seen in any VR game. Let me know what you think about VR game design, and if you've got any examples of game features you think I should have mentioned.